Chitetsu Watanabe from Japan was the world's oldest man when he passed away at 112 years old. In Singapore, volunteer Teresa Su lived to 113 years old. There are around 1,300 centenarians in Singapore today, and businesses would do well not to write them off. Experts say longevity presents one of the biggest business opportunities of the 21st century. They are accounting maybe more than 30% to 50% in future. So they are one of the biggest consumer. And what do they consume? Leisure. Maybe they are taking a lot of uh, holidays overseas or inside their own countries. And uh, second, it's uh, their home environment. Their grocery, you know, they may buy better apples. They may prefer now a Fuji apple from, you know, a apple from somewhere else, you know. They are more willing to buy. And, and, and that is shown in some studies. Preventative healthcare is another area that could see robust growth. This consumer segment wants products and services that promote health and wellness. And if they're sick, they want to be able to detect and treat diseases early. You could also think about technology companies that really empower uh, people to own their kind of health and wellness. It could be around sort of self-diagnosis and understanding, you know, having early indications around maybe sort of issues on, on kind of health and wellness. Technology has many other solutions that are poised to ride the longevity wave. As people live longer, they want to remain physically mobile. Asian Pacific Assistive Robotics Association, we look to maximize human um, potential in the sense of physical and uh, uh, using AI, using robotics, so that they can be as functional as they can for as long as they can. So imagine um, when for a patient with osteoarthritis, for example, walking may not be very well for him, but with certain exoskeleton, he could function as well as he could be previously. Autonomous driving, um, artificial intelligence, you know, sits at the heart of that proposition. You combine the, the prospect of autonomous driving with the, now the fact that anyone can order a taxi on their, on their phone, it means a certain level of independence around mobility. And with family sizes getting smaller, many will be faced with the prospect of living alone. Being able to live safely and independently at home becomes important. A smart floor mat, the IoT Night Watcher, makes use of the Internet of Things or IoT technologies to support independent living. The elderly, when he's uh, at home, usually, uh, especially those who are living alone, for example, he may wake up, walk to the toilet, then walk to the kitchen, then to the living room and then maybe he goes off. In any one day, this pattern, which is usual, is not happening. This will trigger at a preset timing to the caregiver. He receives an SMS to say that uh, he's been in there for quite some time. So it helps the caregiver to, uh, be alert, to, to come to take a look. In this manner, seniors can go about their daily activities and caregivers will have the assurance that they're fine. To live past 100 and enjoy the process at the same time, it's also important to have mental well-being. South Korean firm Eadware has developed an app that it calls SoundMind. Eadware says SoundMind can delay or even prevent dementia. The app has uh, many different exercises. Some are based on spatial reasoning, some are based on language, some are based on memory. Uh, and they're all in a gamified mm -hmm. sense with a very attractive user interface. They cover the 55 tasks areas of the uh, American Academy of Neurology. SoundMind was designed with the elderly user in mind. Our application is just extremely easy to use, very user friendly, and the large icons, and also the system, which is a cognitive training system to prevent the dementia adapts to the user. So the pace of the exercises, the type of exercises, are all customized as the user goes through the system. So 
uh, it pushes a little bit. It's not like it's too difficult that they give up or it becomes frustrating. A key aspect of mental wellness looks at how to reduce isolation and loneliness among seniors. Social robots powered by artificial intelligence technologies can serve as companions for them. Sobots are already being used in South Korea and Japan. Sometimes technology can help to link up them, you know. For me, at least in my service, I'm putting uh, telepresence robotics. You know, I can control the robot in the uh, person's home, talk to them face to face, check with if they they are well, and you know, promote communication. Even as technology becomes more pervasive in the longevity economy, people to people interactions remain important. Connecting with other generations, especially kids, can help seniors stay engaged. Kampong Admiralty in the north of Singapore is the first housing development which seeks to promote such intergenerational bonding. Kampong Admiralty, uh, the model should be replicated more. And in fact, the newer HDB building should be like Kampong Admiralty. With all services, the care services, the you know day-to-day -day services, all into one place. The longevity theme presents investment opportunities, but there are challenges too. We need to have the flexibility to think, you know, the mental flexibility to think that actually the, the consumers of tomorrow, I, the, the older generation tomorrow, may consume in a totally different way than, um, than the consumers, you know, the, than the older, older people today. So I think that the biggest risk for people in, um, in the con from, from an investment perspective in the context of the longevity economy is really having a rigid view of, of ageing.